Okay, let's talk about this problem that you voted off the island. As I just promised you, you're probably going to have a rent problem on your exam. Part A of this problem asks you for the uniform velocity on the level section of track. We'll call that track number two, and this would be track number one, and this would be track number three. <clears throat> and this part I think everyone got. It was just the distance traveled over the time it took. That's going to be two meters over 0.4 <coughs> seconds, or five meters per second. That's not why this problem got voted off the island. This was voted off the island because of part B, where you're asked to find the acceleration on track number one, and you want the magnitude and the direction. Now, the, the direction should be pretty simple after that first tutorial. You know that a ball, when it's either going up a ramp or down a ramp, the acceleration is down the ramp. Okay? The problem is, how big is it? What's its magnitude? And that's given by how much the velocity changes divided by how much the time changes. Now the key is recognizing that this velocity on ramp two is uniform. Now, we're taking a little bit of, a, of an approximation here. If you have a really, really well-polished metal track and you have a heavy steel ball, it's a pretty uniform. We have to ignore some, some resistance, some uh, friction. We're going to talk about friction down the road in a couple of weeks. For now, let's just assume that things speed up when they go downhill. They slow down when they go uphill, and when they're going on a level surface, they go at constant speed. So um, the fact that this is uniform means that if this ball had a speedometer, it would read five, 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 five. Most important, it would be five here, because that's the start of ramp two, but it's the end of ramp one. So if I use my operational definition here, this would be V final at the bottom of the ramp minus V initial at the top of the ramp divided by T final minus T initial. Well, that's going to be 5 minus 0 over 2.3 minus 0.3. That's going to be 5 over 2 or 2.5 meters per second every second. So this is going to be 2.5 meters per second every second. Now you're told that the angle of this ramp is the same as the angle of this ramp. Well, if they have the same steepness and they're made of the same material, it's like the same ramp. Okay, uh, the ball doesn't know whether it's on this ramp or that ramp, so the acceleration over here would also be 2.5 meters per second every second. Now the last part of this problem, part C, is find the velocity at t equals 3.1 seconds. In other words, what's the velocity right there? Well, let me change the problem a little bit. Since this velocity on 2 is always 5, it's going to be 5 right here. If, this is not the problem you solved, but if this ball stayed on that third ramp for one whole second, one whole second, how fast would it be going at the bottom of the ramp? 7.5. That's what this acceleration means. For each second, add 2.5. Well. We weren't actually on that ramp for a whole second. We were on that ramp for 0.4 seconds, or 40% of one second. Okay? And so we can figure out how much of a change there was. It wasn't 2.5, it was 40% of that. 
I could find that by uh, using the operational definition of acceleration. If A is 2.5 and delta T is 0.4, that means that my change in velocity is going to be 2.5 meters per second for every second, but I only have 0.4 seconds, and that's going to be 1 meter per second. So if it's going 5 meters per second up here, and it has a change on the ramp of 1, that means its final is going to be 6 meters per second. Okay, check that your neighbor can do that problem, because they're going to have to do one like it on the exams.